welcome welcome to hip health insurance personalized deceased consumers doctor on the behalf of foremost organization we we continue to talk about healthcare in united states you know in reality folks in reality majority of the americans are healthy why can't we factor in when people are healthy why do we have to raise their premiums at the expense of the others i still don't understand how these insurance companies pays the premium if i am healthy if i don't see a doctor and keep my take care i take care of myself i should be rewarded for my good behavior but it's not happening folks ordinary people are being punished for no reason for no reason their health insurance premiums should be a lot lower a 25 30 year old they hardly go to see a doctor they hardly go get uh, obtain any you know ask for any health uh, you know uh, i would say coverage but they should be given a lower premium when person is healthy their premiums have to be lower but that's not what is happening folks this is my problem that's one of the reasons why i'm passionate about healthcare when a person is young and healthy doesn't have any medical issues when you really look at 68% of the folks are healthy i'm talking about 68% of the us population they are healthy their premium should be based on their health status and it should be a lot lower because they are not using the insurance why are we punishing the healthy folks at the expense of if you really look at at risk there are only 12% of the people are at risk so people with at risk means people who have or smokers have hypertension drug addicts they are prone for some health and diabetes they are prone so they are at risk that their percentage is only 15 12 to 15% folks and they should be having a premium based on that category why are we going after the why are we mixing with everybody else and the third thing is chronic illness do you know the entire population of united states if you really look at it only 15% of the folks have chronic illness but 15% of the folks have chronic illness but they claims are almost 50% so why not we put the people in the chronic illness category base the premium accordingly that's what i don't understand why we can't segment those folks and give the premiums accordingly and focus on those people we can give incentives and rewards to them for the good behavior even those people with chronic illnesses we can lower the premium folks we can lower the premiums by 15 to 20 per but our main focus is on the chronic illness category because that's where most of the claims are so i don't see any reason why we can do a risk segmentation and catastrophic there again a small group of people are exposed to the catastrophic illness and for a limited period of time their premiums are have to be based on that so why can't the insurance premiums be based on each category you know healthy folks at risk folks chronic illness folks and catastrophic or your premiums have to be based that's why i believe personalized healthcare through 
personal care accounts, so-called health savings accounts, will solve that problem because it empowers the consumer. It empowers the consumer, folks. So they take proactive measures to keep their premiums lower. They stay healthy. They don't gain weight. They, you know, by staying healthy, they know they're rewarding themselves so they don't have to spend too much money on their illness. So by staying healthy, you are changing the attitude of the entire population. So by staying healthy, you're saving. You're saving in your personal care health savings accounts. So that will discourage from people abusing their health, not taking care of themselves. So personal, ultimately the personal responsibility means a lot, personal response. So today's topic is, let's focus on individual certificate of guaranteed coverage, folks. Individual, you know, we talk about one size fits all, Medicare for all, socialized medicine, you name it, one size, one size fits all doesn't work, folks. You know, basically you lose the freedom, you lose the healthcare, you lose the freedom in, of your own health. Somebody has to be telling you, you have to go somewhere, you have to go to this, see this doctor, you have to go to this hospital, and you can't have this, you have to pay 20% copay. That's what is happening in Medicare Advantage, folks. Medicare Advantage is a Medicare disadvantage. I believe Medicare Advantage need to be, you know, need to be, the whole concept needs to be changed to Consumers, seniors taking care of themselves, give the tools what they need for the seniors so they can take care of themselves. They don't, don't need to be told, you can't go to see this doctor, you cannot go to see this, you know, so and so. And they're getting in between the patient and provider relationship. So that's not the business of the government. That's not the business of anyone. It has to be between the doctor and the patient. So let's go into detail about individual certificate of guaranteed coverage, folks. How it works. Individual certificate of guaranteed coverage. Empowers and guarantees everyone, folks. Guarantees everyone individual health insurance, even if they have a pre-existing condition, even if they have a pre-existing condition and need of a financial assistance, yes, and in need of a financial assistance. Segmenting, segmenting the uninsurable individuals goes a long way, folks. Segmenting the uninsurable individuals to the premium subsidized impaired health support plans can lower the premiums for others, rest of the groups, by 15 to 20%, folks. 15 to 20%. I'm not kidding. Why can't we focus on those people? They cannot, they have a pre-existing condition and they need a financial assistance. Let's talk a little more detail about what is this guaranteed coverage individual certificate of guaranteed coverage. Maybe you identify yourself as someone you know as wanting individual insurance, right? You want an individual insurance. In that case, you as an applicant got rejected for individual health insurance by an insurer. You can challenge it at no cost to you. You can challenge at no cost to you for not giving the insurance because you have been rejected. When you apply for insurance, you were rejected. And at no cost, the underwriting decision with a Health Review Authority, which is a public-private partnership. It is 
health review authority is under the umbrella of public private partnership folks it doesn't cost the government a penny yes i will explain to you how this health review authority works there are three potential actions the health review authority can take under the public private it is not a public it is not a private it is under the public private partnership the board of the health review authority can take three potential actions on any individual any individual who got rejected or denied health insurance okay first if the applicant determined upon review by the health review authority to be insurable will be given they will be given certificate of guaranteed coverage to secure affordable coverage at rate appropriate to his or her health status and history they will be given originally was rejected by the insurance insur insurance company but once you go to the health review authority they reviewed it you are insured they will give you a certificate of guaranteed coverage so individual certificate of guaranteed coverage coverage can be taken to any participating insurer any participating insurer not just the original rejected insurer for a guaranteed issue folks for a guaranteed issue and coverage of a pre existing conditions so premiums will be at a standard rate premiums will be at a standard rate or with any premium rates not exceeding 10% over the standard premium even though if you have a pre existing condition it should not be over 10% of the standard premium or temporary benefit limits as deemed appropriate by the health review authority folks health review authority can give you a certificate of guaranteed coverage and you can take it to any insurer and they will give you at a reasonable rates that's number 1 and this participating insurer must they must accept certificate of guaranteed coverage equal to the number of individual applicants they previously rejected for coverage so carriers insurance carriers rejecting relatively good risk might find they are required to accept much more worse risk because of the health review authority by balancing the application process in this way insurers or insurance companies will begin to accept more applicants and industry underwriting standards will be voluntarily moderated in favor of the consumer It's very important in favor of the health review authority, in favor of the consumer. They empower. That's how what it is. Fundamental fact is health review authority works for the consumer, not for the insurer. They they protect the consumer. That's what it is. What is the second thing health review authority can take? a individual determined determined to be insurable but in need of a financial assistance as stated by state or federal law as stated by the, because they this applicant needs financial assistance to pay premiums will be given access to a premium subsidized state or federal health insurance exchange 
if somebody needs a financial assistance, they will be given access to, they are insurable, but they need a financial assistance, they will be given an access to premium subsidized state or federal health insurance exchange, folks. That is the second action. What is the third action? The third is eligible individuals determined determine to be uninsurable, uninsurable, are given access to impaired health support plans. They will be given access to impaired health support plans. This is our where we need to focus on. You know, if you really look at the people in this category, there are only two to three percent of the American population. You know, you mean to say America cannot take care of the two to three, they're bringing in so many illegals into the country, they can't take care of the two to three percent of the American citizens for under the umbrella of impaired health support plans. I, you know, I, I wouldn't accept it. Uh, it's not right. They should be able to take, and our focus should be on these impaired health support groups. And once the impaired, uh, impaired health support plan is selected, insurers will no longer be obligated to offer coverage to that applicant. So they no longer be obligated once they are truly uninsurable and they will be given impaired health support plan. As you can see, as you can see, certificate of guaranteed coverage, anyone wanting individual insurance, anyone wanting an individual insurance is guaranteed a plan, even if they have a pre-existing conditions, folks, even if they have a pre-existing or even if they're in need of a financial assistance. That's how certificate of guaranteed coverage works. So everyone is insured. So we have solved the problem once for all of uninsured. You know, before Obamacare came in, we had 28 million uninsured. Now with Obamacare, it came down a little bit, but still there are quite a few people who are uninsured. What I'm saying is if majority of the Americans are healthy, their premiums should be lowered. They should not. That's where the segmentation, risk segmentation should be according to the health status. And health review authority empowers the consumer. It empowers the, it's a review board between the consumer and insurer. It, it, it balances the consumer and insurers. It is, works for the consumer and it benefits both, even insurer benefits. So they can be a participating insurer and they can get reimbursed so they are not exposed to the high risk, high risk so-called individuals. So they can be the high risk individuals will get a certificate of guaranteed coverage under the impaired health support plan. And under that plan, insurers are no longer obligated to pay, no longer obligated to pay for their care. Folks, Thank you for listening. This is Consumers Doctor on the behalf of Foremost Organization on HEP, Health Insurance Personalized Segment. We will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.